Yeah. This book started out as a challenge to write 50,000 words or more within a month's time. The ideas and storylines came as I wrote from some unseen place in a different time. The characters spoke to me as I wrote, and it is their words that are spoken, not mine. I was just an observer into their lives, especially that of Jack. His trip through life includes his loves, his hates, his lusts, and his revenge. His entire life he showed to me in one swoop, and to this I must thank him. I never really thought about trying to publish this as a book, but it seemed to fit for my first attempt. And therefore, here it is, in all its glory. I dedicate this book to a few people, especially a good friend, who pushed me into the direction to publish it. In his own words, he called it a good read, but one that made him felt that he should read it in a locked room, with the lights dim, low for certain parts. Jack's love can sometimes get pretty steamy. I also dedicate this book to those people who have always told me I have had the talent to write, but I never thought so. I have always been my biggest critic when it has come to my writing. There are quite a few few folks out there who have been waiting for my first attempt at a novel. I hope I don't disappoint them. So without any hesitation, on with the show. This is the first chapter by Jason Get Sick. That's, whole, that's how he told me how you pronounce it. The home cupping. Coming. For four years, it has been four years since he had seen her. Jack stood at the train depot, waiting patiently for the train to come. He heard its whistle before he ever saw it, which made him more nervous than ever. What if she didn't remember him? He thought to himself. She could have changed so much in that time. Hell, he himself had changed so much over that time. He was now a noted businessman in the city and had not one but two fine horse teams. He still felt, found himself nervous as the train chugged closer. A chug, a chug, a chug. It was springtime when she left. The snow had just melted off the highlands. He remembered the day well. She wore that pink dress that made her look years older. She always loved that dress. She told him she would never forget him ever. He had smiled, held her hand, kissed her softly, and smelled her sweet perfume. He never forgot that smell. The train pulled into the depot and with a large hiss, which sounded like evil snake, it stopped and from its body emerged her, Mary Jeffrey. She looked just like he had remembered her. He waved to her. She waved back and ran towards him. Her arms spread open wide and she hugged him, not softly or daintily, but tightly, almost hard. She kissed him on the cheek and smiled at him. My, my, Jack Henry, how you have grown, she said with another smile as she broke from the hug. He smiled too, not wanting to be her, uh, want, wanting to, but feeling it was coming from her anyways. Been too long, she continued. Page two. He snapped the reins and the carriage moved away from the train station on the busy street. So, Mary, what have you been up to since we left, Jack said, trying to make conversation. I've been to Berlin and London, studying art and great literature at the finest schools. Father wrote me about your family's lost departure of your grandfather. I was truly sorry to hear of his departure. Jack's face turned solemn as his eyes drifted out into the carriage window, looking out at the street, memory drifting to the night, two armed robbers at the store that his family owned killed his grandfather. Two years ago to this very day he was shot down in cold blood. A tear began to roll down his cheek and Mary frowned. I didn't mean to bring up any poor memories. I'm sorry. She smiled. She sighed, her own eyes turning to look out the window. Not a problem, my dearest and loving cousin. It still pains me. I didn't do anything to stop them. I was there. I could have. Mary turned to look at him. She put her hands onto him. Held him. Yes, you would have been killed as well if you'd not tried anything. Father told me you were lucky, and you could have been shot as well. She pulled him closer. She put out his arms around his shoulders and pulled him closer. He could smell that perfume. I have missed you, my dearest cousin, she said, smiling. I have been away too long. He smiled, holding back, holding her hand in his. The carriage rolled onwards to his father's estate. He wanted to take her to their special guest spot, buried deep in the woods, a small cabin nestled among the pines. He wished he hadn't told her his father he would bring her to see him as soon as he made it. Your father still hunts, she asked, breaking the silence that they had suddenly grown between them. Only when he can pull himself away from the affairs of the business, and of course the affairs of the loins. 
What is your mother? Is she well? Well, she is well, as well as can be. She is in, in Egypt writing a play about her travels. Oh, so very good. She's been around the world and has a way with words. Mary clapped her hands and giggled. He wished he hadn't told his father he would be bringing her to see him as soon as she'd made it in. What are the cabins? She smiled, inquiring, her eyes twinkling. Yay!